Hey guys, my name is Jacob. I'm a second year medical student at St. George's University. I just wanted to do a quick review and advice video for term two medical students if you're getting ready to start. First off, I'd just like to say congrats for making it through term one. Um, I know it's a big adjustment to start med school, but uh, it's a big accomplishment to get to that first term. Um, so kind of continuing where you left off as far as uh, system-based uh, modules in term one, you, you did CPR one, CPR two. Um, when you go get into term two, your first module is going to be ER, which is going to be endocrine and reproductive systems. Uh, this one uh, caught me up a little bit just because it's only two and a half weeks long. So my first advice for this module would be to really stay on top of your lectures and your DLAs in small groups because your exam really comes up quick and there's not um, a lot of time to catch up kind of later on since it's only two and a half weeks. So DM is going to come next after ER and in DM you're going to be looking at digestive and metabolism. So your digestive is obviously going to be your GI tract, you're going to be looking at normal anatomy and normal physiology of your GIT. And then for metabolism, you're going to be looking at all the metabolic pathways in your body. So that include, includes your Krebs cycle, your PDH, your citric acid, um, even like heme and hemoglobin, that pathway. Um, and it, that module DM is going to be about four weeks long. So it's a little, little bit longer. For me, it was a little bit um, probably more difficult just because of all the pathways. Now if you love biochemistry, then DM is going to be the module for you, but um, biochemistry is not my favorite, so um, it was a little bit tougher, but after DM you'll move into uh, three modules, in NB1, 2, and 3. So NB1 is going to focus mainly on your normal anatomy and physiology of your brain and your spinal tract and you're gonna learn a little bit of the cranial nerves but it's mainly going to be an overview you're going to start to um, learn just some basic concepts then in nb2 you'll start to go more in depth with those uh, same topics you'll learn all the cranial nerves and you'll also learn some of the uh, pathologies that can develop within certain cranial nerves but you'll really um, hit the cranial nerves you'll have to know their names, um, which foramen they go through when they um, exit the skull, and things like that. And I think at the end of NB2, you also start to hit a little bit of psychology stuff. And then once you move into NB3, that you, the whole module is going to be psych. So you're basically going to um, take it step by step through the DSM. You're going to learn um, diagnostic criteria for um, all the different personality disorders and um, psych disorders. Um, so it's really important to know the timing for those. Like for example, they may test you by making you differentiate um, bipolar personality disorder versus bipolar disorder and just knowing the criteria. A lot of the times it's gonna be the length of symptoms or possibly the number of symptoms. So obviously, just like in term one, you'll have a module exam for each of those five um, modules. And then what's different in term two versus term one is after your last exam, after your NB3 exam, you'll have what's called the BSCE one, which is a cumulative test from the whole first year. Now, a lot of people ask me about this and they ask me if I have any advice and, and that type of thing. First thing I would say is, do well in NB1, 2, and 3 because the majority of the BSCE is going to be term 2 stuff and I've even heard people say that BSCE1 is basically like an NB4. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't study the other um, material from term 1 or early on in term 2, but that's just to say that you really need to know the NB1, uh, 2, and 3 uh, material because it comes back and you, you get tested on it again in, in that BSCE um, one. Now, as far as prepping for the BSCE one, I started about um, a month before the test and on the weekends and at night when normally I would be um, just chilling out or you know kind of taking a break, 
um, I would go through I would go through the um, lectures that I was struggling in and then also the IMCQs from term one and so that way I could hit each module from term one and I think I focused more on MSK and CPR one and two because those are honestly what comes back a little bit um, a little bit more in um, your BSCE one and the other thing I would say is it would probably be a good idea to um, you know obviously review ER and DM and just kind of look back at anything that you were you felt like you were weak on and um, I would probably go through the IMCQs also from ER and uh, DM and I would also you know just like in the last video I shared I would um, I would use Anki as well because your Anki cards from term one can continue to uh, cycle through as you're doing term two cards and that will really keep you on top of the content for the BSCE. Um, so as far as term two goes you're gonna have those five tests you're gonna have the BSCE so that's six um, pretty big exams there and then you're also going to have your um, your usual participation points for um, lectures, small groups, IMCQs and quizzes and you're also going to have your lab exam and then your OSCE or your physical exam uh, examination. So that's kind of what the uh, semester looks like. I will say that towards the end of term two it gets really really busy you know comparing to uh, term one and so I would just kind of mentally prepare yourself for that try to stay caught up on the material and don't try to you know cram everything at the end because when you think about it in about maybe seven to ten days ish something like that you're gonna have your OSCE your lab exam your MB3 and then your BSCE all within you know like I said about one week so it makes it tough it's a little bit stressful at the end but just push through it and uh, try to stay caught up on your material and uh, you should be good to go. As far as resources, I would continue to use Anki um, throughout all of med school. It's been great so far. And then I you know, continue to use Boards and Beyond and uh, Sketchy and Pixarize. Pixarize was great, especially for like the Pathways and DM. Um, those are not a lot of fun for me personally to learn, but I remember uh, Pixarize specifically has a great video on the uh, heme pathway. I can still remember some of the um, intermediates and uh, diseases um, through that video, even looking back now. But and then I would also say, you know, it's it's important to continue to use the Gray's Anatomy questions, especially as you're going through the anatomical parts of your uh, GI. Uh, end, endocrine and reproductive and then also the, your neuroanatomy. Um, that book is great. Uh, SGU will put out a lot of questions to do so I would do those you know two or three times. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful if you're going into term two. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with us and uh, see future videos that we put out uh, please like and subscribe below and uh, let me know if in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, good luck to you.